In today's video, I'm going to go over some more tips and tricks to make your life easier when teaching on Zoom. Hey dancers, welcome to Dance Tech with Jay Su, the channel where dancers become more proficient and efficient in the digital space. With schools in the US starting back up, I've had a bunch of conversations with teachers helping them get ready to teach dance class from home. So I thought I would compile the most helpful points that I've come across so far. Before we start, I just wanna give a shout out to all the teachers for your incredible dedication to your kids. I can't imagine what you've been going through this summer as the school systems keep changing their plans and things have been so up in the air that you don't have time or the support you need to teach as effectively as possible. My hope is this video will help you streamline your process and I'm sure things will become easier as time goes on. I wish I had the foresight to make this a few weeks ago, but it is what it is. These tips are not in any particular order, but I'll put the time codes of things I cover in the video description below. I realize there are also teachers using other platforms like Google Meet, but this video will be focused on Zoom since that seems to be what most people are using. However, if you're using another platform, hopefully some of these tips will still help. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you check out my five tips for dance teachers video because I'm not gonna say those tips again and I'll put that video in the cards up above. So, let's get into it. Giving directions. If you don't want to constantly flip your left and right in your head as you teach, I highly recommend using Snap Camera to flip your webcam. I made a whole video on how to do this, which I will link in the cards up above. However, if you have a Chromebook, tablet, smartphone, unfortunately this won't work and I have had so many requests on a solution for this and I am still looking, so please bear with me. Everyone, hopefully I will find something soon, but in the meantime, here are some ideas that might make things a little bit easier. Tying something on your wrist. I've had friends who will tie a piece of fabric on their wrist or their ankle so their students know that that side is always the right or left even if you mess up your left or right as you teach. Or try putting some colored paper on the ground. This could be particularly helpful for younger students. Get four pieces of different colored paper and put them downstage, upstage, stage right, stage left and then have your students do the same at home. That way you can say go to the red side, blue side, green, etc. And you can even make it an activity to decorate the pieces of paper or write something on them. Lighting. I plan on making a whole video about this, but when it comes to teaching on Zoom, basically don't have your back to a window if you don't have any other lights on in that room. When you do that, either you turn into a silhouette or your camera tries to compensate and the entire image gets way grainier than it needs to be. Even something like having a lamp by your computer will help, but general rule of thumb, you want to face the brightest source of light in the room, assuming you're okay with students seeing that part of your room. And remember, you can always push things just out of frame. You don't need to clean your entire room to teach in it. Audio. I made a pretty long video about the different audio setups I've gone through, and I'll link that in the cards above. But for most teachers working with a limited budget, I would recommend sharing your computer sound and using Bluetooth earbuds. That way your students will be able to hear you no matter where you are in the room and the music will come through clearly. You can also set it so you hear everything through your earbuds and not your computer speakers so you don't bother anyone else in the house. If you check out my other video, it's version two starting at around nine minutes. Grid view versus speaker view. When you're teaching, I would recommend having all of your students watch in speaker view while you teach in grid view. That way you can see everyone at the same time, but they can focus on you. If you spotlight yourself, that will lock you in as the main speaker for everyone. So even if other students talk during the call, you will remain the main speaker. To do this, just click on the top right of your box and select the spotlight option. This will automatically put everyone in speaker view, although if they want to, they can always switch back to grid view on their own. If you want to focus on a student, you can always pin them on your screen. Pinning only affects your screen and it will put it into speaker view, highlighting whoever you pinned. Just click on the top right corner of that student's video and select the pin option. Again, just to reiterate, when you spotlight a person's video, that will highlight them on everyone's screen. When you pin a video, it will only highlight that person on your screen and you can do both at the same time. Hey everyone, this is Jaysu here. So uh, I literally just updated Zoom right before I recorded this and you can now no longer spotlight and pin another video 
at the same time. Uh, I literally tested this yesterday to make sure it worked and it worked and then today I decided to update Zoom and now you can't. So unfortunately you cannot spotlight yourself and pin a student. Uh, but a fun new feature that they've added is now you can uh, reorder the boxes. So you can click and drag. So for choreography, that might actually be a really cool feature. To remove the pin or spotlight, just click on the buttons on the top left of your screen. Also, I would recommend having everyone enable hide non-video part non participants in their video settings. This way, if you want to watch smaller groups of people, you can just have everyone else turn their camera off. Recording your Zoom session. When it comes to recording the Zoom sessions, I know there are a lot of things to consider legally and every school district has their own policies. However, here are some things that will hopefully help across the board. If you log onto your account online and go to settings and click on the recording tab, you'll see a lot of options. If you select record active speaker, gallery view, and shared screen separately, and then select active speaker, it will only record it in speaker view. And if you spotlight yourself, then the recording should only be your screen the entire time. You can set meetings to automatically record so you don't have to worry about forgetting to hit the record button. And if you record it to the cloud, you can set the cloud recording to automatically delete after a certain period of time. Not only that, but you can even trim the video so students only see the part of class you want them to see. Just go to your recordings, select your meeting, and hit the play button. Then click on the scissor icon on the bottom right hand corner to trim the video. Just make sure when you share the link to disable downloading. If you allow people to download the video, it will download the entire file, not what you trimmed. Also, if recording students is a big concern, consider having your phone or another camera right next to your computer recording you teach. That way, you know it will only record you, and once you upload the file, you can delete it off your device. Virtual backgrounds. This is a sneak peek for next week's video, but consider using virtual backgrounds like you would a whiteboard. You can upload still images with class schedules, choreography prompts, or anything else you might want your students to remember. Or you can get fancy and use a video countdown to make sure students stay on track with water breaks, choreography time, etc. If you want to learn more about how to do this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And once that video is up, I will also link it in the cards up above. And finally, make sure you take time to get away from your screen. With so much of our work right now in front of computers, it's even more important to take time and go outside or at least get away from your screen. And remember, you got this. That's it for this video, everyone. Let me know in the comments what tip you found most helpful and what you still have questions about. Make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button so you know when new videos come out, and I'll see you next time. Five, six, seven, eight.